my scout master, Mr. Eric. Hi, Mr. Eric. Hello. How are you doing? Doing great. Okay. How are you guys doing? Good. You doing well? Yeah. Good. Pretty good. Okay, my first question is, what inspired you to be a scout leader? What inspired me to be a scout leader? Well, I kind of got roped into it. So uh, my oldest son, Noah, started scouts in the first grade. Uh, and then once Johnny came along, they said, would you like to be a leader? And since I'd been in scouts, helping out with the scouts for about two years, I said, sure, no problem, I'd love to do it. So that's how I got involved in scouts. Basically, um, well, in addition, I was a teacher. My wife and I, Stephanie, we were teachers in the Houston Independent School District. We taught fifth grade, so we both love working with kids. So I wanted to get back into working with kids because I didn't get to do that during my day job. So, I was excited about doing that. I know that you go to camp, but where was the most exciting camping trip you ever went to? The most exciting camping trip that we, well, I don't know if Derek and Chris went on that trip, but we went to a place called Rocky Face State Park. Mm, so, that was a climbing trip that we did. We got to do climbing and rappelling. That was really exciting and it was really cold that night. It was 26 degrees, so there were lots of scouts. There was a heated bathroom. There were lots of scouts crowded into that heated bathroom in the morning because it was so cold. But the rappelling and the climbing part during the day, that was lots of fun. We were going up and down cliffs that were probably 80 to 100 feet tall. So, and some of the scouts were scared because when you're rappelling, you have to inch your way back over the edge of the cliff and trust that the gear that you're wearing is going to hold you. So, and if it doesn't? Oh, it's going to hold you because they've got double and triple safety features. So, but yes, it's a little nerve wracking walking back over that edge and then looking down a hundred <laughs> straight feet to the ground. So, but that was a very exciting camping trip. So, yeah. one of the things I'd like to do this year with the troop is go whitewater rafting. Have you guys ever been whitewater rafting before? You have? Yeah. Where did you go? I didn't go. You didn't go? I don't think I did. You didn't think you quit? Where did you where did I, you go? I have no idea. You have no idea. Okay, but we <laughs> so go on that canoeing trip. You know that canoeing trip? That's class zero and one rapid. So basically it's nice rolling rapid. But what I want to take you guys on is class three and four rapids, which is like going up and down a roller coaster. So it's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> That's what I would like to do in August. So, oh my God. What other questions you guys have? Um, where, where, do you, where does the troop meet? Where is the troop meet? The troop meets at Centenary United Methodist Church at the corner of Friendly Avenue and Elam Avenue uh, here in Greensboro. So we meet at 7 o'clock on Tuesday nights for an hour and a half. So, is it a nice place? Is the Scout Hut a nice place? Let's see how to answer that diplomatically. Uh, you've got 10 adult males and close to 35 Boy Scouts. So is it a nice place to meet? Yes, it is a nice place to meet. Is it a clean place to meet? Most of the time it's not because you've got 10 adult guys and 35 Scouts there who make a mess of it. So. What is the age to join? What is the age to join? Okay, you have to be in the fifth grade the second part of the year, say January and February. So you were what, 13 in fifth grade? No, no, 10. 10. Okay, well, see, <laughs> that's why I don't know. 10. You have to be 10 years old. Okay, so you have to be in the second half of your fifth, fifth grade year to join. So, I'm 11. I'm in fifth grade. Yes. To be, okay, girls, though, they have what's known as the venture program which is a combination of uh, boys and girls. You have to be 14 to join the Venture Crew, and that's the co-ed version of scouting. So, uh, and they do a lot of the same things that we do as a scout troop. So they'll go on backpacking trips, they'll go on camping trips, they do basically the same thing we do. They but just only, don't earn ranks. But so, only more dangerous. Only more dangerous. Why do you say only more dangerous? Because they're older and more mature. Mm. I'll say okay. At 14, you are somewhat more mature. Yes. Yes. Eh. 
<laughs> Somewhat more mature. What else? Just a little bit. Um, where's the most dangerous place you've been? Where is the most dangerous place you've been? Um, I'd have to say caving two weeks ago. <laughs> uh, oh my because oh my. there was so much mud in the ground and it was so slick, I was afraid I was going to fall. And we had to crawl across um, what's known as a saddle. So oh the saddle got us from one side of the cave to the other side of the cave. On either side of the saddle, there was about a 15 to 20 foot drop off. So you had to crawl across that in order to get from one side to the other. Then you had to climb up and down these ropes, not to mention oh go slide. They encourage you to slide because the, the ground was so muddy and so wet and so slippery that you would fall and hurt yourself. So yes, that's that's probably the most dangerous thing we've done. Don't so. don't go to that cave because it's a big thing that you have to climb up. It's like a straight wall, you have to climb that up and then it's more, it, it's too, no, okay. Okay, you go ahead. So, hmm. what else? How can kids join by scouts? How can kids join Boy Scouts? Well, um, they can contact their local council, which is the Old North State Council, uh, and find out the nearest troop to them, or they can go on search BSA locator on, on the internet, so, and find the closest troop to them, and then contact them via that. So, and then it's just a matter of just finding which troop you like, which troop fits best with you as far as which troop meets on what night, or if you have friends in your troop. So, um, and then you're just on your way. So, what else? Um, what kind of activities do you give? What kind of activities? Well, um, what's your favorite thing we do on a Tuesday night? Mm. Cleaning the scout hut, right? No. That's, that's what it is, right? Yes? My favorite thing would have to be... Oh, when we sleep out at the hut and we play manhunt. That's, that's right. So, what we try to do as a troop is the adult leaders and scouts is what's known as boy-led. So, you guys have a senior patrol leader, assistant senior patrol leader, and the adults work with them to uh, create activities that they learn skills at that aren't boring. So we do things like knot challenge or we'll build a rope bridge that they can cross or we'll play team building exercises. So things that get you guys involved so that you're not just sitting there reading your scout book verbatim because the last thing you guys want to do at the end of a long school day is come and sit and listen to us drone on and on and on about this is how you tie a knot. <laughs> I'm not going to show you, but this is how you do it. <laughs> now you need to do it yourself. So we try to make things exciting for you so that it's, it's, it's called experiential learning. Yeah, which stands for what? Explain, demonstrate, guide, enable. Which, so meaning explain what? So say, for instance, I'm, you're teaching me how to tie a square knot. So you're doing what as far as explaining? Explain what the knot is used for. Okay. And then demonstrate. Demonstrate how to do the square knot. Okay. And then you're going to actually physically do what next? You're going to guide me yeah. on how to tie that. So by explaining and demonstrating and guiding, then you've enabled me to learn how to tie a square knot. It's, it's the adage of, what is it? It's give a man a fish, he doesn't know anything. Teach a man how to fish. He knows how to feed himself. So it's the same thing. It's experiential education. The whole, that's what, that's, that's one of the things that attracted me to scouting was that uh, it's the same principle that we had at the school that I taught at. So we did experiential education too. So it's very exciting. We cooked last Tuesday too. That was pretty fun. Yes. And what did you guys cook? My group, we cooked rice with that meat stuff, I forgot what it was Spam. called. Spam. Spam yes. and ramen. And ramen. It's ramen sauce. And why did you guys cook that? Because we was we, to make, to y'all was teaching us how to make it easier to cook on a hiking trip. That's right, so we were trying to, so there are several different options of when you go backpacking. Backpacking is you carry your backpack on you and you hike someplace and then you set up camp. 
Well, you don't want to bring a huge stove with you. You want to bring a small backpacking stove. So what we do is we try to present the scouts with alternatives as to what they could cook. As opposed to spending $25 on a freeze-dried meal, they could take simple things that you guys like to eat, like ramen noodles, and make that instead. So, Is learning your activities hard? Is learning the activities that we teach hard? Well, it can be. It just depends on how complicated the activity is. So, say for instance, if I'm setting up a compass course, then I have to figure out the spots of the compass course, and then I've got to actually lay it out, and then figure out what turns of the compass course, what degrees of each station is, in order to get to the next station. So it can be complicated. But most of the things I like to do are easy. Keep it simple. Um, can you tell us what equipment is most beneficial for count? camping what equipment is most beneficial uh, tarp uh, a tarp and duct tape <laughs> why why do you think a tarp so the rain could go on the tarp and not get to you that's camp. right and so you have a something to put underneath your tent so the moisture doesn't wick up and get your sleeping bag wet why duct tape they can tape Tent down? That's right. So you can fix things with duct tape. So yes, you can make anything with duct tape. At Boy Scouts, y'all make things, right? Yes, we do. What were one of your best things that you made there? Um, well, we've made, okay, so we've done a couple things. We've made tripods where we actually have the guys quickly make a tripod and then suspend a can from that of water and try and boil the water so it's like a challenge. Uh, we've also done things uh, like we built what's known as a monkey bridge. So it's a, it's a bridge that spans uh, probably a 40 foot distance and the boys can walk across that bridge. It's a rope bridge. So and it's made of all natural material. It's, it's, it's uh, twine and rope and logs. So those are some things that we made. We made teepees. What was one of your best? One of my best what? Best um, things that you made. One of the best things that I've made um, in, the Boy Scouts. in the Boy Scouts. Well, in summer camp, uh, we have what's known as a Jack Sparrow race, uh, which is a, a race where we build a raft and we have two scouts swim around this buoy out, out on the lake. So we had to build the raft, so we made a bamboo raft. So in uh, weaving, weaving the twine in between the pieces of bamboo and making sure that it was secure and that it was it was solid, so they didn't fall apart once the scouts got on it and went down to the water. That's probably one of the best things we've ever made. I wasn't there. Did we win last year? That's a different story. We did not win last year. We came in fourth place last year. So, yes, I know. It's shocking, isn't it? Because we've come in first place the four years that I've been there. We've come in first place three of the four years. So, the last year was the exception. So, we've made... Uh, Tomahawks at summer camp. You know what a tomahawk is? No, it's a. Uh, explain what a tomahawk is. It's a tiny axe. It's a tiny axe. So, what we do is we take a piece of bamboo and then we take a rock and we take a piece of twine and oh. we make a, a tomahawk. So. Lucky, you got anything else? No, do you? No. Okay. That has been the Rocky and Derek Show. Thank you for joining us. Thank Eric, Mr. Eric for joining us. Thank I'm you. I'm glad to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Until next time. Bye.